Navy night. During the wee navy hours of darkness before dawn, amidst the first frost of autumn 2021, I caught myself pacing the halls of my new living quarters, freshly renovated and seemingly undisturbed by any madness just yet. Desperate for comic relief in everything, I laughed at myself as I paced like a ghost, tears rolling down my pale cheeks, frantically searching for something or someone. I was just barely emerging from my chemo coma, the four nights and days in which I became the equivalent of a lightly pencil sketched outline of myself. No charcoal, no paints, no mixed media, nothing that flirted with the idea of permanence. No, just a couple of curved lines etched by a whimsical plumber on lunch with a couple of minutes to kill and a dull weathered number two to do the job. Dry it out eraser, loose free hand. Obsessively visual, I was able to appreciate the artistic integrity of such a ghostly sight. I wasn't exactly Michelle Kwan and all her distilled grace inside of Eva Cassidy's field of gold, but there was something pure about what I was witnessing in myself, by myself. In a moment of unadulterated tenderness, I asked the little girl inside of me what she was so attentively looking for. Me, she whispered. I'm looking for me. Sheesh, so now I'm haunting my own self? At some point between the second and third rounds of chemo, I recognized a pattern in the post-infusion periods. After each round, I faced a sling of harrowing questions that without fail would mow me down like wheat for the bushel. Will she come back? Will I feel the lightness of her footsteps again? The wild cackle of her laughter? The generosity in her smile? the hope in her heart? Will my spirit give up on this battle and float away into the happy sky, leaving just a sorry shell of me behind, to which the sunshine would merely mock? <sighs> when I faced the deep blue face of doubt, I would pace, as if to prove to the lingering naysayer, get out of the way, she's here to stay. In the deepest pangs of chemo's blows, I saw my deepest fears with the clarity of a bird's eye view on a crystal clear summer's day. All at once, I found myself to be utterly pitiful and undeniably lovable. Chemo seemed to be taking so much away from me. My fertility, my body mass, my appetite, my pleasures, the sound of my voice. It was as if I rose unconsciously on night guard to ensure that this stealth, invisible intruder wouldn't take the best of me. The fighter in me wasn't going down without a fight, for these were precious gems I was protecting. The girl in me who dared to paint the world with the unnamed colors of her imagination. The hustler in me who managed to carve out a majestic fortress to hold her whims and pains in this troubled world we live in. The mischievous prophet who painted her lips crimson red and leaked vicious truths like honeysuckle. There I was, gliding across the creaking wood floors, sharp as a navy seal, as terrified and emboldened as one could be. I did the only thing left to do. I lay my asphalt down like a freshly poured Sixth Avenue, and it, chemo, was the Halloween parade. <laughs>